I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I have a cold again. <laughs> it's your turn. I, I was last oh, week. Oh, <laughs> man. You had it. I got it. So, But you feel great, you said. Feeling good. Good. So um, maybe I'm only a week away mm-hmm. from health again. But one of my but, kids you know, we, is six, so, oh. so no guarantees. <laughs> well, we, we had so many folks in our family over the Christmas holiday that were sick that it's no wonder I got it because mm-hmm. if it's out there, I'll get it. Yeah, me You know, too. I'm like the test strip for colds. You know, you just, if you're wondering if they're around, <laughs> just send me into the room and if I come out, I test positive. <laughs> Anyways, but we're not here to talk about my lack of health. Um, we're talking about crockpots and microwaves. Mm-hmm. So I asked you last week, or you said you thought you knew what I was talking about. Mm-hmm. So time to find out full transparency. Did you get it right? I think I did. Yes. I knew better than, right. to, than, than to think this really had to do with cooking. That's right. <laughs> Although it is very possible that I would have a podcast that would talk about food. Quite true. No, it's not possible. It's probable, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it was. And so, so you guessed it. We were ta- I was talking about different types of learning. Mm-hmm. But, but in my post, um, it kind of was fun going down a memory lane of my first experience with a microwave. Because my aunt and uncle, there was a Tappan factory, small appliance factory in Mansfield, Ohio. And my uncle always had the latest and greatest. He was a a home builder. So anything that was new in homes, he had. So one Christmas they came and they brought this microwave to our house. It was huge. And it sat on the counter and and like, we like, what is this thing? Is this thing (laughs) like, what? It does what? And, and and my parents were so worried that we would turn it on with nothing in it, that they put a cup of water in it. So that just in case we hit the start button. And one of the things I remember was they said, don't ever put a hard-boiled egg in the microwave. Well, you don't say that to like a Mm 12-year-old. So I put this hard-boiled egg in and I put the timer to like three minutes. (laughs) And I'm guessing that 45 seconds in, I just hear this boom. And literally, I had hard-boiled egg just plastered all over the inside of the microwave. So I had to clean it up. (laughs) The other thing they said was, don't ever put anything metallic in it. Mm Mm-hmm. So, you know, I didn't deliberately do it, but my mother and father had this fine china that had like a silver inlay yep. around the top of a cup, like a, uh, uh, like a coffee cup or a teacup. Mm-hmm. And I made the mistake of putting that in. Oh, man, the fireworks that took off in that thing. I still make wow. that mistake. <laughs> there were sparks everywhere. And then I also realized that, that gets really, really hot. Mm-hmm. So then I burned myself trying to get it out quickly. But those are some great, great things about microwaves. It was fun. You know, we were worried, were, were we going to get like cancer from it or don't stand too close? And nowadays you don't think anything of it. They're so small. They sit in a cupboard somewhere or under a cupboard. You know, we use ours, Tim and I, almost every night. It's a bag of popcorn kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You don't even think about the dangers of microwaves. Because they're wonderful. But then I talked about crockpots. So they're just so comfortable, you know? Mm-hmm. Like you turn on a microwave and lights come on and they tables make a lot rotate. Of noise. They make a lot of noise and they ding when they're done. They jingle. They but have little songs. They, they do. But the crockpot just kind of sits there and says, you know, it's like Eeyore. You know, <laughs> thanks for noticing me. <laughs> you know, you can plug it in, you turn it on, and you got to put your hand in the thing for about three minutes before it starts to get warm. Mm-hmm. Yep. But they're um, they're amazing, aren't they? They're so reliable. You can't oh. you can't mess things up. You can't mess things up in a crock pot. You can leave fact, it. You can you can go somewhere and just leave it on. Right, leave it on all day. Nobody worries. Your house isn't going to burn down because of your crock pot, mm-hmm. except, right? Except there was that. This is us episode. That I'm sure people are thinking about right now. <laughs> oh, so that really did happen? Well, in a TV show. Oh, okay. Well, see, that's make-believe, right? <laughs> the real world. So, you know, think about the the benefit of a micro or of a crock pot is it's a slow cooker. Mm-hmm. It's safe. You put the meal in in the morning. Mm-hmm. You go off to work 
And when you come into the house, the house smells amazing. Yep. The the flavors just kind of blend. You can put a tough chuck roast in, and when you come home, you have, you know, pot roast that's amazing. Yep. And actually, one of our member companies, Giovanni Foods, makes slow cooker pouches. I don't know who the, who they make it for. I should have known that before I said this publicly. <laughs> But they do some private labeling for somebody, and, and I've had some samples. It's amazing. You put yeah. that stuff in, oh, wow. So now I'm getting hungry, even though I just had dinner. <laughs> because we've actually had two Crock-Pot meals in a row, mm-hmm. yesterday and today, and they were both amazing. But we're not here to talk about food or Crock-Pots. We're here to talk about training and learning. Because I think too many people think that they can learn like you use a microwave. I'm going to go to the class. I'm going to cram. So think, let's let's look back. You, you know, you're a, a smart young woman and you went off to higher education. So did you ever cram for an exam? Yes. So did you do well <laughs> on the exam? I did well on the exam, but I can't guarantee that I actually learned anything or could do well on that exam now. <laughs> Why not? Well, because I just memorized what I need, what I knew I needed to memorize for the exam, and yep, went on with my life. Yeah, e- exactly mm-hmm. right. When we cram, we literally just microwave the learning. Mm-hmm. Um, it it gets us to pass the test, and then a couple of days later, we have no idea what we learned. And that that happens in all of our, in any kind of learning, if we try to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. So my thought really was that we should think about, there are no quick fixes to learning, just like there are no quick fixes to diets. There's no quick fixes to exercise. It's a daily, slow process. So just think about slow cookers. You know, it's a little bit of heat over a longer period of time that can break down the toughest of meats that can blend the best flavors. And, and, and that's really what I want us to think about with our learning. Mm-hmm. Because So, so let's, let's see if we can identify some ways that we could slow cook our learning. So can you think of, and here's where I throw you the curveballs all the time. So can you think of ways that we could learn that's similar to a slow cooker? Um, I, the first thing that comes to mind would be um, like a, a book study. Over, yes, over, I, I love it. I just joined one today, actually, and I, I, it's a digital one, and it's over the span of 12 months, so it's all year long. Wow. So talk about slow. So tell us about a digital book club. How does that work? Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet because I haven't gone to, we haven't had the first session yet, but um, okay. it's going to be through Zoom, like a, which, is oh, a, great. which is a conferencing I think yes. video and audio conferencing um, service, and yep. everyone will read one book a month that is um, kind of assigned by the group. So that's already okay. established, and then you are actually yep. challenged to read eight of your own books, um, as cool. well. So it's twenty books, and they're all development focused, and um, yeah, I mean, I. Just happened to come across it today. Um, I got an invitation from one of my connections on LinkedIn, and she sent it to me. And thought I'd be interested, and I was. So that is awesome. Yeah, that's great. You know, and when you were think when you were talking about the the book club, another way of looking that at that might be a mastermind, mm-hmm. where you it's nothing but a book club, and we've done those at Macney where we yep. we did um, where I did a couple years of the the mastermind around the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, Mm -hmm. you know, getting together with people and taking just one chapter in, in a book that is something you want to learn about and, and just sharing the experiences that you're experiencing as you read the book, as opposed to just reading the book and making notes. Mm -hmm. It, it really makes the books come alive. And those learnings, if, if, if we think about what's happening, kind of like a crock pot, as we're as we're going through this process, we're listening to the feedback or to the ideas that other people have, and we're connecting it with the takeaways we had from the book, and it takes all of our learnings to a higher level. And if you could take a, you know, when we did the 21 Laws, well, we actually, we did that over the course of a year, 
we did we did two two laws or two chapters a month and then recapped on the 12th month and you know for me i have to say every time i've gone through that i've gleaned additional little things out of that book so that that's a great great mm-hmm. way of learning you know another thing that i thought about was um when you learn something and this is i was just teaching a new group of supervisory leadership students today and at the end of every one of my classes regardless of what i'm teaching i say what is one thing you learned today and who are you going to share it with within the next 24 hours that's another way to do it take take one little thing and teach it to somebody mm-hmm. by teaching it to somebody you're really embedding that learning deep, deep, deep down inside. And, and you'd be surprised. Over time, the, the learnings are incredible. You will be shocked at how many, how many um, nuances of, of things you were studying you'll remember just by doing that because you're connecting it. When you were in school, did you have any learning tips or like memorization tricks that you used? Um. I w- I would take really good handwritten notes. Yep. And then I would when I was studying, I would rewrite them or sometimes retype them. Yes. Um, or turn them into flashcards or something, but something that had a muscle memory aspect yep. to it. Exactly. Uh, that I was I was big into that. So I would spend a lot of time slowly working through the same things that I had already worked through. Yep. Perfect. You know, one of the things, because we had just, um, last week we talked about what I learned in 2019. The the action of reflecting and retyping or rewriting. So actually what I did, um, this was the first year that I actually rewrote it by hand. Because other years I would just, I was typing it into Evernote. Mm Mm-hmm. But this year, I actually rewrote it by hand. And I think that really helped me embed the learning more. So if you talk about a slow cooker, I took a year's worth of notes and then took a week to reflect on the year's worth of notes to really embed the learnings. Mm-hmm. And what's what I really, what I find happens is that when I'm doing a teaching Every time I do the teaching, it's slightly different because I have new information from that process of just slow cooking my learning. Um, that's why I think, too, that the, the learning piece about podcasts, you know, where it's you're you're just you're you're listening to it. You're thinking on it. You can go back and listen to it again. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Maxwell Leadership Podcast. And what I love about their podcast is typically what they'll do is they'll do a teaching and then they discuss what was just taught. So it's almost like a mastermind or a book study on a teaching. Mm -hmm. So this just, I just want to encourage people to look for creative ways. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You It's okay. I was going to say, really thinking about your development and growth from a more holistic standpoint. So yes. we're not discounting the value of a one day class or even a two hour right. class, but it, thinking right. about, okay, so I, I spent this day or a few hours in this class. What else can I do to reinforce that and, and take those points? So maybe there are books that support what you learned in that right. class. And then you can talk to someone else and tell them what you learned. And then there are, our podcasts that build upon that thinking. Yes. So it's not just like, okay, I spent four hours thinking about this topic and I'm done. It's I spent those four hours and now I'm going to reinforce that with 30 minutes of podcast and I'm going to read this book over the next month. And then it almost becomes easier for you to then make the changes or, um, you know, do take advantage of what you learned and use it. Because exactly. you really shifted your thought towards that subject, if that makes sense. Exactly. And I and I love how you made how you said that a holistic approach to your learning. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad that people take full day and two hour classes, because if they didn't, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have a job. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of important that they do, but but I love that how you build up upon that. I actually had um one of the participants in today's class 
um, the president of his company sent asked him to come and then communicated with me and said, could you please send an extra training binder back to our facility, you know, with my employee, because I'd like to be able to discuss with him what he's learning. Mm. Now, that's the way an organization yes. gets the most out of their training dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, some some months ago, or it might even been over a year ago, we, we did a podcast and the title was Once is Never Enough. And it was on this this point about how do we really embed learnings and and oftentimes our retention rate is as low as 5% mm-hmm. on something, a class that we took or a conference we went to. But we can get it up to 90% by using some methodology that would include repetition, reflection, application, and then teaching of that point to other people. So that's that's the key. Just slow down, mm-hmm. enjoy it. Don't rush through things. You know, I'm... I'm getting ready to, uh, in March, I will be going back down to Orlando for another Maxwell certification event. Um, I'm going to end up taking probably 30 pages of notes. I'm going to be there for four or five days. Um, that's like drinking from a fire hose, and I know it. It's it's literally like a microwave <laughs> for four or five days. But the note taking and then the reflection afterwards and, and thinking, what what did I take, what could I take away from this? that I could actually apply right away. Or maybe for me, one of the great things for me is when I write about something in my weekly post, that's my way of learning it at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Because if I think it through in such a way that I can write about it, and then you and I can talk about it, it really is a key to my growth. And hopefully is beneficial to other people. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much all I I thought we would talk about with this. Anything you can think of that we might have forgotten? Um, I just think also that this would apply to goal setting as well. We're sure. into January now. It's you know, yes. middle of January. And I'm sure many of us had very lofty ambitions on January 1st. Yes. And yep. just remembering that those goals that you set take time and they do maybe you've fallen off a little bit that's okay there's still 11 and a half months to right slowly work towards those goals and i mean truthfully i'm i'm a little behind i didn't get to my reflection because i was sick between christmas and new year's and um i've started working on my goals, but I haven't finished. And that's okay. I'm good with that because I know that I have the entire year and really my entire life to work towards those things. And so if, as long as I can work on them slowly and steadily, yes. that that is what counts. Yes. And and that'll be part of the journey and part of the, yep. the process instead of looking absolutely. for these quick fixes for things that, Ab- that won't absolutely. last. You know, think about this. Quick fix goals are like quick fix fad diets or mm-hmm. quick fix exercise routines. Mm-hmm. They don't last. Right. And really, you know, our, if, if somebody's really struggling, and I'm glad you brought that up, you know, where are we with goals right now? Um, go back and listen to the podcast where we talked about habit goals mm-hmm. and finding ways to just create habits. Yep. That over, that's the same thing as a slow cooker learning process. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit every day becomes a habit mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're going to end up with amazing success. Yeah. Things you couldn't even dream of. You're actually going to be able to do. Yeah, so in a, that was great. in a world that is so fast-paced that is constantly looking for instant gratification, we are telling you to please slow down. We are giving everyone permission to slow yes. down. Yes. <laughs> slow down. Yeah. Take a breath. Yep. And enjoy the warmth mm-hmm. of a crock pot. Mhm. Wow. That's not very profound, but it, I thought it would. I thought it would sound more profound than it did, but it didn't. I mean, I was letting it marinate. Oh, I love that letting it marinate. Think about that too. Food is always better when it's marinated for a long time. <laughs> and actually, one of my mentors, uh, Don Du, who was one of my greatest mentors, used to when he would give me an idea, he'd say, "Let that marinate for a while," mm-hmm. and then he'd leave, and he'd come back a week later and say. So what are you thinking about that? Mm -hmm. But I love that phrase, let it marinate for a while. Mm -hmm. Super. Any plans for the upcoming weekend? Um, I don't think so. Or if I do, I cannot remember them. How about you? Well, you're, uh, 
It's supposed to be extremely warm. Yes. So I'm probably going to take the Christmas lights off the tree behind the house. Oh, that sounds really exciting. Because I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it when it's frigid. Yes. So, but other than that, yeah, nothing special. Just um, probably trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Mm -hmm.